Keeping with the custom, I'd like to start out by thanking all of you who participated by posting your questions. Let's start answering them. What if you and an inducted member are speaking and another inducted member says hello to you from across the street? That member is unknown to the member you're speaking to. Would you tell him who he is or say nothing? In most instances, if I seen he didn't know him, I would ask if he wanted to meet him. But then there were times that I wouldn't say anything. Now, if the guy walked over to us, I would introduce them. If a made guy and his wife vacation in Italy, would he be escorted by a member of the Sicilian Mafia to show him around and make sure his family is safe? Well, to begin with, there's a difference between Italy and Sicily. Although Sicily is technically part of Italy, it's its own island off the tip of Italy. And it wouldn't necessarily be a member of the Sicilian Mafia. It could be a member of the other organizations or mafias in Italy. But the answer is no. The member from America wouldn't need to be escorted because he's on vacation with his family. Given the rise of Albanian gangs across Europe, and more specifically in Italy, do you ever see a situation where traditional Italian clans, such as Andragata, Camorra, and Sicilian Mafia, drop all rivalries and join forces to protect their own interests? The Mafia in Italy and Sicily have been doing business with the Albanians, especially in the drug business. In fact, the Albanians play a much larger role due to all the recent arrests with the Andragon and Camorra. As far as them becoming one, or as you put it, joining forces, I don't see that ever happening. Working side by side, yes, but nothing more than that. Why don't more mobsters facing a life sentence go to a country where there's no extradition before sentencing? Well, for one, guys waiting to be sentenced to life do so from a prison cell. If for some unusual reason they're free on bail, I highly doubt they'll be able to travel out of the country. We'll soon be in 2024, and I would have to say that the days of laminate are over. During your time in the Lucchese family, were there any policies about who could conduct an induction ceremony? Did a member of the administration have to be present, and could the ceremony be conducted by a captain or a soldier? Typically, a member or members of the administration are present and conduct a ceremony. However, a captain or even a member can oversee a ceremony if instructed to do so. Why aren't there more pictures of Michael DeSantis on the internet? Is he that careful? Is there an unwritten rule amongst his circle where pictures are not allowed of him? There's a few pictures of him out there, but some guys don't have a lot of pictures of themselves floating around. The FBI, on the other hand, possess plenty of pictures of everyone. Can a person on a shelf socially hang out with other members and eat at their restaurant and bars? Is this frowned upon? What if a shelf member had two brothers who were members? Is there a special rule regarding brothers? Or is the shelf member banned from family parties? Typically, no one's supposed to bother with a shelf member. Will guys meet and talk with them? Yes. They could go out to eat and have a drink in businesses owned by a member. As far as brothers, I believe it's up to the brothers how they want to deal with their brother and he wouldn't be banned from family events unless told to do so by his brothers. Can a member on the shelf be picked up by another family? Absolutely not. When you're inducted into a family, you remain with that family, especially a family that puts you on the shelf. In your experience, what happens to a legitimate business that a made guy has a piece of after he dies? Usually, the someone he knows or someone else in the crew will service that business, service being the word that's used. You mentioned Joe Messino tried changing the banana name to Messino. What might be the reason that Gotti or Musso didn't try the same thing? The names of the five families remained the same for over 90 years. Although Joe Messino did attempt changing the banana name, it never stuck. As for the reason Gotti or Musso never gave it a thought, I have no idea. What would happen if a civilian like myself tried to enter a mafia social club? Most of the clubs have been shut down, but if you were to walk into one, most likely somebody would ask you what you want and then tell you that it's a private club. Would you agree that guys who go away, come home and then go back, and then go back on multiple bids, are simply doing life on the installment plan? Unfortunately, there are many guys who catch case after case. When I was in prison, I seen guys go home and come back, some of them a few times. So I would agree. Besides the West Side, are there other nicknames wise guys use to describe other families? I believe I mentioned this in the past. The Bananos are sometimes called the Bananas. I've heard the Columbos be referred to as the Persico family. The Gambinos are sometimes called the Gams, depending on who you're speaking to. And for the Lucchese's, guys make an L with their fingers 
as I demonstrated with my own hand. Can a friend be a member of other social groups like the Knights of Columbus, Elks, etc.? Yes, there's no rule against it. I knew of guys, mostly old timers, who belong to the Knights of Columbus. When a business goes on record with a family, is it the actual corporation or the owner who's on record? Also, what would happen if a business owner died and passed the business down to his kids? Would they be expected to kick up? It's the owner who goes on record, and naturally the business is on record as well. If the owner dies, whatever family member's taken over will be sat down and spoken to regarding what's expected. Does the position of boss of bosses still exist? If so, could he overrule another boss? Presently, I don't believe there's such a thing. It's definitely too risky to conduct a commission meeting. Two or three bosses may meet, but having five in one meeting is a thing of the past. No one boss rules. I know it was said Carlo Gambino held such a title, but I think he just headed the commission. I don't know about overruling other bosses. Does any of the five families or the Cavacanti family control or get money from the hot dog carts and food carts scattered throughout New York City? As most of you know, you probably couldn't count the hot dog carts and food trucks in New York. And I'm sure a few of them are kicking up to somebody. A higher ranking mafiosi here, also in the Freemasonry, like in Italy. I believe they're more into Freemasonry in Italy. And I've never heard of anyone involved here, but you never know. Why wouldn't Gene Gotti tell his brother to beat it on taking a plea? Well, John Gotti was not only his brother, but the boss of the family. At the time, Gene Gotti had to reject the plea deal, one that would have saved him decades. But his brother wouldn't let anyone take a plea. And ultimately, Gene Gotti served close to 30 years. And you could believe he wasn't too happy about that. If we had the same laws in Canada, here in the United States, do you think they would still be doing murders? Or is the life really over? Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you could get life for murder in Canada and do 25 years on it. As far as murders, history has shown that the government comes down on a family that commits a murder. Did you ever go through any formal counter surveillance training or did you pick up on tactics from being around others? No, I never had any formal training and 90% of the mob is complacent in how they go about their business. I was just careful when I was in that life and I still am. People like to use the word paranoid, which I find very funny because I belong to a family that is famously known for being paranoid. But let me just say this. If I wasn't on point, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. You mentioned that you've spoken with old timers. Could you please share some hints or advice as what they told you about reading people? First and foremost, reading people is an art. This wasn't taught to me by old timers. I think one of the easiest ways is to just pay attention. People will show you signs that something's off. For instance, take my situation. At the very end of my time in that life, all of these guys were acting out of character. To be honest, the Lucchese family needs a class on how to rock a guy to sleep. A telltale sign that something's terribly wrong is behavioral patterns. They do a 180. For example, you come out of your house every day and your neighbor greets you. But then out of nowhere, you come out one day and he ignores you. And he does the same the next day and the next day. You don't need to be taught how to read people to figure out that something's wrong. Let me quickly mention the super thanks icon found beneath this video for anyone who wants to show appreciation for videos such as this. And thank you. I'll end with this. For those of you who could read between the lines, there's only so much I'm going to reveal about counter surveillance or reading people because the mob made themselves my enemies and I'm never going to school an enemy.